crop circles. Are they created by aliens in an attempt to communicate with us, or are they made by bored people? Extremely bored people. I'm gonna go with who cares. This video is about making these things in Blender, so let's go. The first thing we need is a symbol. I grabbed this one off of freesvg.com, but you can use anything as long as it's black and white. Black is the cutout area, white is the wheat. Save it as a PNG and we're good to go. Now, in Blender, let's make a grid. For landscapes, I usually like to work in real world scale, but not here, as this works better smaller in Blender. Make a grid that is 2 meters large, with 100 subdivisions on the X and Y. Next, we'll position the camera. These steps here are kind of arbitrary, but I like to block things out first, so you do you. Here we can turn on Cycles Rendering Engine because it looks pretty nice with this. EV works well too, probably, I, I guess. Let's now give this thing a shader. In the shading workspace, we can add in a wood texture. I used a wood shader from AmbientCG.com. At this height, Wood looks pretty decent here. You might be like, what? And I'll be like, I don't care, try it. If you don't like it, don't do it. Find something else that looks better. Next, we need to see what we're looking at. I like HDR images, so let's add one in the world section. I'll rotate it so the sun is coming from the left here. Now we need wheat, because that's what aliens are attracted to. Select the grid and add in a particle system. What the f Let's take the hair height down to 0.01 meters and segments to like three. We can play with the number here and see more stocks, but be really careful as this can crash your computer if you add too much. You just gotta find what works for you. You can turn on interpolation here and get more stocks. Again, be careful and only move the display amount in small increments or you might make your computer angry. Mine is always angry, that's the trick. Now, the part you've been waiting for, but first hit subscribe. There, I said it. Let's cut out our crop circle. On the bottom of the particle menu there is a window called texture. Remember this. Hit the material icon and create a new texture. Now, hit open and load in the PNG of whatever crop circle you made, or downloaded, or whatever. That is now a texture in Blender that we can access. Go to the texture window I just told you to remember, and at the bottom, hit the little arrow thing and load in the thing that says texture. Now, you'll see a tab that says influence. Click that. You're now an influence. <laughs> I'll stop. Check density. And look, look, look at that! You just did what aliens travel trillions of miles to do after figuring out how to travel faster than light. Humans, we're just better. We're not done yet. Here are a few cool tricks to make this better. Under mapping, you can move the texture around a bit to move the crop circle if you want. We are missing something though. We need the rows of wheat. For that, one simple way to do it is just to add black lines on top of your original crop circle image. If you now refresh the texture map, there, you now have rows. To make this look a bit better, we can make the lighting more powerful, and we can also add in a gamma node to the color channel on the shader to play with the wheat color a bit. Let's see what this looks like rendered, because that's where the truth is. Wow, that looks great! Look at those... holes. That's the interpolation in this case. To get rid of that, we can switch back to none under children, then add more to the number of particles under emission. Not too bad, but a bit linear and gritty. To fix that, we can go to the particles menu, turn on rotation, and under velocity add a very slight randomization, or you get this. Play with this number until you're happy. Render it, and maybe color correct it, and don't look up. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.